So what happens when you've planned your sprint goals, you created the perfect definition of done, and now it's time to do the work? How do you actually go from moving your sticky notes all the way from to do to done? Welcome to the Daily Stand-Up, a daily ritual that Scrum teams do every single day to make sure that they are making progress on all the goals and no one gets blocked. So that's what I saw every day when I was working for a tech startup. Every day, a bunch of engineers come to work, make their first cup of coffee, and then they gather around a Scrum board. It looked very similar to this, had a few more columns, but the basics of it was the same. They had the sticky notes and the to-do, they were trying to get it all the way to done, there were some blocked in process columns. Every day they would gather around it and everyone would be standing up. That's why it's called stand up. The reason why you need to be standing up is because you get tired quickly and the meetings will not go on forever and ever and ever. A daily stand up is supposed to be short, about 15 minutes. And every team member would answer a question. What did I work on yesterday? What I'm gonna work on today? Is there anything that is blocking me? So every member takes turn and just answers these three questions. And the goal is to make sure that the scrum board is updated, all the sticky notes are moved to the appropriate column. And if you are blocked by someone, this person can quickly unblock you or if you're stuck on something because you lack some skills or knowledge, and more senior members can stay with you for a little bit longer after the stand up and give you the necessary training to unblock you. That's how it works in a team of several people. But what do you do when you, you're just a team of one? And that's what this channel is about. How do we adapt all this tools and rituals that we learn from Agile and Scrum to our own personal projects and goals. I've been doing it ever since I've learned about Scrum and Agile and started adapting it to my own life. At first, um, for the first few years, I was doing it when I was journaling every morning. So I have developed this journaling practice that I have later called the 10x coffee practice. You can still find it on my blog. I will leave a link in the description. It's free, take it, use it. So if you have enough time in the morning, and that's what I used to have, lovely slow mornings where I didn't have to rush anywhere. I was working remotely. Um, I didn't have any kids. So I could wake up, grab my coffee and journal and have my daily stand up during the journaling practice. It takes about 10 minutes, so kind of the same amount of time that it takes you to drink your morning coffee. Now I'm in a different season of life. I do my daily stand-up the night before. So I come to this board the night before and I ask the same question. What did I work on today? So I move any of the sticky notes that need to be moved from one column to another. Sticky notes from today column can either go to done can go to blocked or can stay here. So that's the first step, kind of update the whole system. Then what will I work on tomorrow? Before I start putting the sticky notes, there are a few things that happen. First is that I check my calendar. What is my daily capacity for tomorrow? We've talked about sprint capacity when we were planning the sprint goals. This is kind of a similar idea, but for a 24 hour period. Do I have a lot of meetings? Is it mentally exhausting? Am I just driving around town doing a bunch of meetings? So what is happening tomorrow? Uh, so that I can plan my SAP tasks that would fit well within this day. I also, and that's uh, something that a lot of uh, Scrum teams also implement, is that they have a limit. So we've talked about having a limit on the to-do items, but it's also important to have a limit on how many sticky notes you can put in the 
in progress or today column. In my case, it's three. I put no more than three subtasks. So yellow smaller sticky notes are my subtasks. The big sticky notes are the sprint goals that the subtasks belong to. So these are kind of my focus areas. I like to work at like two sprint goals at a time. So I just try to move like the most important ones all the way to done. So I get a bunch of work of, on them done, move them to done. Then I pick the next two and focus on those. But um, I move the bigger sticky notes and their definition of done uh, to the today column just to kind of make sure that I somehow differentiate this sprint goals from the remaining sprint goals. And I tell my brain, hey, we are focusing on this two and ignoring everything else. And then I create three subtasks. It can be two if I'm too busy, or it can be one if it's a major subtask and I just want to get it done. So I create my three subtasks. I also check my blocked column. Is there anything that is blocked, but I can follow up on? Usually there is like a socially acceptable amount of time you should wait before following up on something. And uh, if something is kind of like, it's time to follow up, I, will, I would move the sticky note to like the next day and make sure that I follow up on that item. And then I ask myself, is there anything that is blocking me? So I'm looking for potential threats something that will prevent me from doing these three subtasks. Um, if there is something that I am planning to do, it usually happens with deep work tasks that I like to do them early in the morning. I wake up early before the rest of the household wakes up and I get them done while it's quiet, while my brain is fresh. So if there is a task like that, I want to make sure that I actually wake up at the early hour. So I need to make sure that I go to bed on time. If there is a task that requires me driving somewhere, because we have one car in our household, I need to make sure that I communicate with my husband and I let him know that I need this car for this time period. So he doesn't accidentally take the car. Um, so I'm kind of like looking for all the potential threats. Then I also like the more advanced level of uh, unblocking myself is to actually ask a question of how can I make it easier to achieve this goal? Is there any prep work that I can do today? Oftentimes, to be quite honest, the, the, the most helpful thing I can do for myself is to prep my food for the next day. That way, I am not distracted by cooking. I'm not distracted by the thought where I should eat. Everything is packed and ready to go. And I just need to microwave it and eat it. Kind of saves a lot of the mental capacity for the next day. For example, if I'm going out to some outdoors setting to film one of those videos, I want to make sure everything is packed, everything is charged. I've been in this situation before. I've learned my lesson. Um, so everything is charged, prepared, the bag is ready to go. So that's a kind of more advanced level of daily stand-up is asking a question, how can I make it easier for myself today with some of the prep work to make sure that I achieve these goals tomorrow? So I want to give you guys a closer look at the scrum board. So I usually have two sprint goals that I'm focusing on, and then I create my three sub tasks. Um, so the maximum is three. Doesn't mean I have to do only three. I can do more, but uh, in this column, the limit is to have three, no more than three sticky notes. And then once they are done, I just move it to them. Again, this smaller uh, sticky notes are the next actionable steps on the bigger goal that are on the blue sticky notes. I only put the subtasks on my board that I need to do in the next 24 hours. And it might sound counterintuitive because what you are taught is to break down all your goals into subtasks, write them down ahead of time, put it all on the list, schedule it in, and 
I've done it for a long time before I started doing Agile. There is an enormous cost associated with listing everything up, up uh, everything up front, all the subtasks, because there are a lot of them. And the moment you see this board, you get overwhelmed, and that's the cost. But if it's just a small chunk of it, and you only see a small chunk at a time, you're more likely to do it. This is a very, very useful concept that I have developed for myself. I like to tell myself that, hey, listen, you had enough time to think. You had the whole sprint planning period to think about your backlog, to think about the strategy for your life, to kind of really consider what you want to focus on for the upcoming sprint. You've had enough time to think and you've made your decision. And now it's time to turn off that thinking brain and just tune into the execution mode, just moving things to done. I don't know about you, but my brain will like find a thousand and one excuse why this sprint goal is no longer relevant, why I should focus on something else, why it was a stupid idea, why I should do it next sprint, not this sprint. And it's, it's a nightmare. I do that still every day. And the mental image that helps me is that I imagine myself being like in these two different roles. One is a manager and one is an employee. And during the sprint, I am an employee. I kind of imagine myself working in some sort of factory where I have to go to work at 9 a.m. or whatever that hour is and move things done. And then when the sprint ends, that's when I have time to think about the sprint retrospective and what can be done different, what I should work on uh, in the following sprint. The thinking time will come. I'm not saying that you have to mindlessly do it. The thing is that you've spent enough thinking time that you decided on this goal. It probably means there are good goals to pursue. And all this resistance is just your brain not wanting to do the hard work. It wants a new shiny thing. And it's just kind of like dividing these two roles of a manager and an employee helps me and I hope it will help you as well. And so a daily stand-up, I also treat it as a quick meeting between my employee and the manager. So it's kind of like, I am an employee reporting to my manager that, hey, this was done, this is what's blocking me. And my manager is helping me to create the environment so that the employee can get these things done. Because ultimately, that's kind of the role of a manager is to create a nourishing environment for the employees to do the work to unblock them, to make sure that they have everything they need, all the supplies. That's the metaphor that's been helping me. You feel free to adopt it in your life. Well, first of all, you get to look at your scrum board. Even though it's in your office, in your bedroom, in your guest room, it's already hard to ignore. And I talked about it in the scrum board video. That's the major benefit. Like with the app, you, you just close the app and never look at it. With the scrum board, it's there. And you, it's hard to escape. But the daily stand-up also kind of forces you to engage with it. Move the sticky notes. Think about what you should be doing next. It keeps it relevant and up-to-date. Every time you look at it, you kind of have a visual snapshot of where you are in the sprint. So... Even by looking at this scrum board, you can see that I'm working on two sprint goals. One has not been started, so I'm kind of, you know, in the beginning of my sprint. That's good. I'm making some progress. It also keeps you focused on the next actionable step. Not at the whole overwhelming amount of things to do. And that's, again, I think the major lesson that they've learned about personal productivity is that you have to like do everything you can to reduce the overwhelm and to reduce the perceived effort of the desired action. So by limiting the sticky notes on the board at any given point is a very proactive approach. 
because visually you look at it and you're like well i just need to focus on these three things it's not so bad i can do it and they're like what record the video pack section one and pack section two not too bad i can do it you know even though there is like a hundred <laughs> there, there there are more upcoming tasks but you don't see them up front you just see the things that you need to take action in the next 24 hours i think no app can compare to it is actually the tactile feeling of moving things like grabbing and sticking them and moving it all the way to done and you get to do it multiple times a day and then you see your done column being populated with the small sticky notes i think it's so much better to actually like take the thing and move it like in this physical world to done uh, i think we live in a lot of the digital environment and we're lacking this physical like tactile feeling of working with analog tools and objects every time i do it i have so much satisfaction it's kind of like another proof that i have made progress on something that is truly important to me try it out daily stand up create a limit of how many sticky notes you want to do per day and slowly tackle your bigger goals and focus on just the next actionable steps till you get to the definition of done in the next video i'll talk about print retrospective stay tuned